cataractcoach.com, your surgical skills at case number 300. This video is going to show you where you should be by about case number 300. We have an anonymous surgeon who's operating. I don't know who the surgeon is, but I want to show you the video because I thought this was a very good video, very good performance, very good surgery for 300 cases. There's the incision. Looks like the surgeon sitting superiorly, right-handed surgeon. Incision looks good. Good tunnel length, good architecture. Nicely hitting those limbal vessels. Here comes some tripan blue dye. Now, certainly in your training, use all the tripan blue dye you want. In the U.S., it's about $55 to $60 per dose. Keep that in mind, however. A little bit of viscoelastic here, dispersive to coat the outside of the eye, filling up the anterior chamber as well. And let's see the rexus. Oh, very nice. Going right to the forceps. So we've sped up the video at twice normal speed just so I can show you the whole case. It's not a lightning fast case, but again, it doesn't have to be. A better marker of good surgical skill is control, not speed. So is the surgeon in control of the tissue and the eye the whole case? That's a good marker. Beautiful looking rexus, that went very well. And let's see what we got here for hydro dissection. So it looks like another Side port incisions being made there, a paracentesis. And here we go, letting out a little of the viscoelastic first to make room for the hydrodissection. That's a reasonable idea. Slow and steady with that hydrodissection. Let's see, do we see a fluid wave? That yeah, looks pretty good. Now, I know this video is not the highest resolution of the best quality, but this just shows you the ingenuity. This is a surgeon who was able to clip his mobile phone, his cell phone, to one of the oculars on the assistant scope and record this video. And so it's not ultra high definition, but it certainly does the trick. And I really like the ingenuity of uh, figuring that out. So now probably adjusting the FACO tip. You want to get that FACO sleeve positioned exactly where you want it. And that's going to vary surgeon to surgeon. And sometimes it takes time for your technician to set it up. There we go. Faco probe in the right hand. Looks like some sort of a small, maybe a Nagahara chopper in the left hand. And let's see our technique here. Cleaning up the anterior cortex a little bit. And grooving. Oh, a chop. Right away chop. Beautiful. Very nice. Now, the chop didn't go all the way through. It didn't, didn't propagate. That's okay. Do it again. Rotate the nucleus. Buzz in again. Place the chopper on the equator. There. Now you got it. I like that persistence. You got to stick with it, chopping again. So a nucleus like this, if you're going to do horizontal chop, I agree. Do chop, chop, and more chop. Keep chopping out away at it and break it up into smaller and smaller pieces. There we go. And the pieces come up. I like how he chops them in the bag, then brings them up to the iris plane, and then further sub-chops them prior to emulsifying them. There's the remainder of the nucleus chopped again in the bag. And now this piece will be brought up to the iris plane and then further sub-chopped. Again, watch. Buzz in around the equator. Chop a piece off. Take it off. So very nice technique. Even at normal speed, this would be a pleasure to watch. I just want to be able to show you the whole case. So if you're doing your training, this is a good benchmark for you. You should be able to do this by case number 300. So the last bits of nucleus here are now going to be emulsified. Keep in mind, though... As the last pieces come up, where's the capsular bag? It's right behind them. And so now with nothing weighing down the capsular bag, it may flop forwards if there's any fluidic imbalance. So he's taking down these pieces quite nicely. Very good. Like how the eye's staying in primary. There's the epinuclear shell. Chopper in that helpful position to rotate the last piece around. And here's that last little fragment as well as epinuclear shell. There it is, clean. Very nice. You know, cataract surgery is such a pleasure. I just am so thankful that I get to perform it every week. We are so fortunate to be ophthalmologists and especially cataract surgeons. So now switching over to the cortex removal, the IA probe. Let's see, are we going to do a bimanual approach or probably a coaxial approach? Also, in this patient, I do like the draping. Draping's great. Look how the lid margin's out of the way. No eyelashes are exposed. Beautiful. So coaxial cortex removal with the IA probe. Grabbing that right there. Looks pretty good. And so not a whole lot of cortex material. Looks like there's a little tiny nuclear chip that maybe you need to be pushed in the port. 
You can try to remove some of these bubbles as well, but I wouldn't worry. They'll go down as soon as you uh, move within the eye and take out the rest of the cortex. It's also a good indication that you probably still have a good amount of viscoelastic there against the endothelium since those bubbles are sticking in place. And here's the last subincisional cortex. That's usually the trickiest for a younger surgeon, and that just goes beautifully, so very nice. You know, as you're going up that surgical learning curve, it's so important for you to video record your cases. Remember your favorite athletes, whatever sport you like. They always record their, their games, and they watch game day footage. They study it. So you need to be able to do the same thing. Take this very seriously. Record these cases, even if you have to just clip your mobile phone to the assistant scope oculars. You can do it. Figure out a way in order to record these cases so you can go home and study them. And then ask yourself for every case, all right, what was good? And what could be better? How can I improve this case? How can I hone the technique? And go through every single step of it. So go through the incision, go through the rexus, the hydro dissection, the nucleus division, all of that to make sure you're going to be able to deliver the best you can. And remember, your goal, be better every week. So here comes the lens. Looks like a three-piece lens. Remember the 7L rule. I like the flipping of the tip. Perfect. There's the 7 Opta goes in, here comes the, the uppercase L. Beautiful. Very important to understand what the correct orientation is. Do not put this lens in the eye upside down. This is correct. Very nice. Now the lens choice is going to vary from surgeon to surgeon. And uh, we've seen multiple different cases here this week with different types of IOLs. So taking out the viscoelastic, going behind the IOL optic. See, this is a theme. You need to be able to do this. And now in front of the eye, and cleaning out the rest of the viscoelastic. So really nice case here. Cleaning out the angle too, make sure there's no residual core, um, viscoelastic in that lens capsule bag or also in the angle, because that's where it's going to occlude the trabecular mesh where it can give you high pressure the next day. So case is almost done. Just time to seal the incision. I want to thank this anonymous surgeon for sending the video in. And this should be you at Case 300.